we'll now move on to the initial introductory part of the program. Introduction to the standards. Very good afternoon, all the participants. Already our MD, Mr. B.G. Menon, has given an intro on the need for the standards. I'm just going to give a simple introduction to the digital health standards, its content, and its scoring pattern, leading to accreditation requirements. The detailed inputs to each of the chapter-wise will be given by my colleagues subsequently. So starting with the introductory part of it, I'm going to cover the key aspects, major concern areas. Uh -huh. Hello. And will also involve the technologies that are involved behind the digital health standards and the brief introduction to the standards, scoring pattern, etc. So we really look at the purpose of the digital care. The major requirement is that how to ensure people at places are able to access, have access to their health care. So today, that is a major concern area as far as the interiors, the villages are concerned, where people have to come all the way the cities to avail their healthcare requirements. So this digital health standard facilitates having connectivity even to the villages. How do you do it? Through digital means, you have this internet of things, portals, handheld devices, wearable devices. Today we are talking about if you are able to measure the heart rate, etc. Even your walking pattern, etc. Right? And then whatever data that are collected, we are appropriately transferred to your repository for future reference. So this become part of the minimum requirements and achieving this uh, access to health today, we have already uh, things like telemedicine, tele-ICU and tele-ambulance services have been already introduced. So these are software enabled services where people living far off can avail their OP consultation itself. And similarly, people who have recently undergone surgery, they want further extended ICU stay, can have telehealth ICU where ICU beds are made available and doctors are on call uh, available, mainly to give instructions to the people who are there at the tele ICU center to give guidance on what to be done and monitoring of the parameters, etc. And mainly the tele ambulance part of it, where any emergency related thing, shifting of the patients required to the hospitals, this ambulance will have we are calling facility along with the caretakers who will be contacted through tele uh, uh, communication systems to give any immediate or the intervention that are required for the patient so that the uh, everything need not be given by the time the patient comes to the hospital uh, emergency area so these are the enablers of technology which are behind us and these have to work effectively the major concern areas which we talk about as part of the digital health standards are normally the security, information security, confidentiality related requirements. Because today we say access to individual personalized accounts, everything are happening, right? So today this is one of the major concerns how this will confidentiality of patient data will be maintained. Second important thing is we will be using multiple devices, monitoring devices, like for example, you are imaging digital imaging uh, centers where the DICOM standards will be made applicable and they need to be able to talk to and give the data of the images seamlessly to the uh, computers where the telehealth facilities are made available. Vice versa, even the electronic medical records which are need to be made accessible. So interoperability we talk about. So there are different standards or guidelines which are there, FHIR guidelines which we'll be covering as part of this. Then third and most important thing is available a good network for transfer of data. For the today, there is no deterring of the data. Transfer of data takes place smoothly because we are talking about visual images. We are also talking about uh, the patient record related aspects. Everything is converted into information for exchange. So it needs to be seamlessly able to be transferred across multiple because today people want to avail, they have been availing of OPD services, maybe down to Chennai, later when they travel down to Delhi, they are taking their again OP consultation subsequently there. Their old record should be made available there, right? So this is where we talk about seamless exchange of data wherever it is required. 
the major technologies that come behind uh, this digital standards which include first and foremost is the hmi system i know that many of the hospitals have latched on to standalone hmi system which normally covers patient registration portals op scheduling billing related aspects and then pharmacy related records imaging transfer records other administrative function records all these are already interlinked so today this is one of the important things that are required in order to facilitate this second one electronic health record that many of the hospitals have been maintaining ehrs electronic health record systems so that patient records are managed for a period of time and this also includes sharing of the record within the hospital between multiple touch points suppose patient has come to the opd the information of op assessment is shared with the medical record department similarly where they come to the imaging department or laboratory for test the test reports etc are shared again so the information sharing among multiple touch points also become essential in this and decision support today whatever outcome that that are coming out of the interventions given to the patient because today the data of the patient vitals etc are being recorded which enables faster decision making right so these are also to become part of this telemedicine today where digital platforms are there which communicate enable patients to avail of these facilities and uh, components of this include virtual consultations where the uh, patient can have access to any clinician at a far off place and monitoring of the all the the vitals etc is possible emergency care that is made possible out of this and then patient portals for appointment scheduling that means that using your handheld devices you are able to fix appointments at the hospital and the clinician also is able to see wherever already his schedules have been booked his availability everything he will also know as per appointment and then payment related thing past medical history etc all these are accessible through handheld devices patient patient portals the major driving point for all this is ayushman bharat digital mission abdm which has got these three major elements one is ayushman bharat health account a aba number that which is a unique number where patient get registered and get their unique number and which is again cross record across all their documents for easy accessibility then health professional registry where clinicians who want to provide consulting make their services available they can log on and get registered in this national health professional registry because this is a national registry so that they can get even uh, patient related telemedicine requests etc can be routed through it to them then health facility registry wherever hospitals healthcare service provider they want to get registered in the national portal that is hv hfr is there so all these are enabled so that the entire healthcare delivery system is made available at the disposal of the patient easily right today more than about 60 to 70 uh, hospitals both private and government institutions have all got enrolled into this right so what is the national digital your nab is digital health standards that are got to deliver as part of this the new standards what we are today going to cover broadly it again talks about ensuring patient identification through unique id number as well as ayushman bharat health account that patient gets registered and gets his unique id number which can be made useful for accessing his health records anywhere across india again radiology information system or pacs which are archiving communicate system which is basically for your digital uh, um, images etc for storage as well as transmission again cboe which is computer provider order entry mechanism which is a software related which enables the uh, clinician to order laboratory test at any time or radiology test at any time and also for pharmaceutical related orders you can give access through through this in nursing for their part all their notes can be created through electronic health records software which normally today has got a mechanism to even take take down notes while somebody is dictating it so that you don't need to all the time start writing it out so these are the capabilities that are there as part of the standards requirement again data backup requirements the ability to see that the data is not tampered with and uh, even in case of power outage etc you have a power backup system to maintain the data whatever is being recorded on live at uh, any point of time similarly to protect the uh, 
particularly patient records from any virus related things. They have antivirus software requirements. And then firewall, this is a security system to ensure your network hacking attempts are literally thwarted. Right? Then guidelines with respect to employees use of hardware software within because today you are going to have access by all the staff within the healthcare facility to all the uh, patient records at various touch points. So there will be certain rules and procedures which they need to uh, ensure they follow. Similarly, guidelines with respect to data privacy, security protocols, etc. And then disaster recovery. Suppose you find that your health care facility suddenly has got a disaster uh, area, this thing, like you were flooding or something. You are able to operate from any other place in no time because all the patient records, everything has been maintained by the cloud servers. Right, so you find that there's a continuity of your patient care happening from any way. Then requirement of electronic fund transfer for all the payment related uh, applications, UPA interfaces, everything enabled. Then tracking of the expenses with respect to receivable, potential billing errors, etc., to be taken care of. Similarly, requirement for digital notification, mainly for sending messages to the patients through their angle device with respect to their scheduled appointment, sending out their medical reports or for it, for example, even their lab reports, et cetera, sharing that. So digital notifications with respect to be enabled, digital standardized billing templates so that it is made uniform, standardized one. Similarly, insurance claim processing today, there is also has been made a requirement as part of the standards, the conditions and requirements. Staff roster with respect to staff training records, performance management, everything become part of the standard requirement. Again, clinical standards, adherence to certain SNO CT standards, which normally talks about all the clinical terms, whatever are used by the clinicians, which are all easily made available so that any patient assessment is done by the clinician. These terminologies, the system is able to recognize and accordingly make note of in your ICD codification. Simulated DICOM standard for digital imaging requirements. FHIR, this is where I talk about interoperability resources that each of the digital uh, system that you use, including your uh, stethoscope, digital stethoscope, uh, other BP monitoring devices, et cetera, they are records need to be shareable. So this is where that for the communication purposes in a secure mode, this FHIR standard, these are not, nothing but standard guidelines, which are need to be adhered to. This is basically HL7 transaction requirement standard. Again, digital hospital dashboards requirement is there, which allows hospital to monitor the quality of care that are provided on a real-time basis. Coming to the standards, brief overview, eight chapters are there, spread over 38 uh, standards and 182 objective events. The beauty of this standards is there are no separate distinction between HCO and SSCV. Either it is 50 beds or 100 beds, all follow the same single standards, right? Now, applicability, we will come to that in the last slide between the small cell and the larger hospitals. This accreditation is not a certification, this is an accreditation. So, it is a validity of three years they are given. Unlike your NABH now, which has modified the fifth edition, it validated to four years here. They have kept it initially for three years. There's going to be a surveillance assessment after 18 months. The broad chapter coverage, these are the eight chapters which we'll be today drilling into. I am not going to any of this right now. The major thing to be made a note of is that aligned with the NAB 5th edition standards, these standards have also been categorized into various levels, core standards and commitment standards, which are the minimum requirements to be followed for accreditation. And achievement standards normally to be included at the time of surveillance and excellence during re-accreditation. Right? This is the same norm what we have for similar to NAB 5th edition standards. So this is the way I did how the standards have been broken up into core, commitment, achievement, and excellent standards. You will see that core elements for COP is nil. Similarly, core elements for HRM is nil. IMS also core elements are nil. But on the other hand, the minimum requirement comes from the commitment standards. The scoring pattern, if you really look at it, it is the old NAB uh, scoring standard, 0, 5, 10. I mean, zero score for against each objective element, which is means well, objective element requirement is not met. Where a score of five is there, then there's a partial meeting of the requirements. Score of 10 indicates the objective elements requirements are fully met. And those standards, objective elements are not applicable. You can mark it as not applicable and scoring and rather will not be done. 
it is a, a slide which indicates how the award of uh, accreditation will be done. There will be three levels broadly, silver level, gold level and platinum level. If you look at the silver level, there is a minimum requirements, score and commitment level, 100% compliant requirement is mandatory. Commitment standard, at least 60% is mandatory at the time when you are going for first time accreditation. Achievement excellence are not applicable, right? When you are going for a gold level, you find that achievement standards are also added there, but excellence standards need not be met with. Platinum level, all the standards are to be met. So this is where maybe an entry level or a SSEO related requirement can go in for maybe a silver uh, related level and then slowly migrate to gold level. And if possible, you put all the resource requirements for a platinum level and start basing the requirement. At the time of surveillance, 18 months, you find the 60% requirements are gone up to 80%. So your silver level, you find requirements of 100% for core level, commitment level, 80% is required to be made. This is the same as what we talk about in ABH requirements for the edition also, right? Minimum at the first level, first year. Whereas for here, surveillance requirement, 80% complaints. Goal level also similarly, 60% levels have been increased to 80% complaints. So it also calls for a judicious selection of the applicable standards so that you meet that 80% requirements very easily. So this is where the healthcare organizations can play around in order to see that they either they would like to go into the goal level or silver level forever. So there's no requirement to see that once you are at silver level, you can stay there at that level itself forever. Later, you can migrate whenever you want to the next goal level or platinum level. So there is no mandatoriness that after three years validation, you need to migrate to gold. So that's what presently it has been given. So with this, I stop my overview. Uh, the details of next AAC chapter on notes will be taken care of by my colleague, Mr. Yaran now.